to kick. Welcome to kick. Welcome to kick. Welcome to kicker. Unmasked live weekly. Good evening, everyone. Two, 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 Tuesday. Good evening, everyone. I like to keep the show to about ninety minutes. Delicious. Be sure you get that schmedium every Tuesday night. Full, full, full till boogie. Kip, 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 delicious. Hippopotamus. Cold, 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 cold beverage. Schmedium. Mid, 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 midler. Out in BFE. Out, 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 out in BFE. At the end of the day. since the original kicker christened that first pickup truck. It kicked off a car audio renaissance and upgrading your music in a vehicle was a requirement. America's Music Machine became living loud over your passion, your emotion, your existence. Outdoors or on the open road, your sound is kicker. At the Denso NHRA 4 Wide Nationals here in Las Vegas. Man, we have got two time funny car, top fuel champion, Cruz Pedregon here, icon of the sport. 
dude. We just so appreciate you taking the time. But I got to ask you, so we know in 1986, you were driving go-karts. And a year later, you're in a dragster. What what made that change of going from wanting to do you know track racing to running down straight track racing? I started out with something I could afford. So there was a little dirt track, a few dirt track races in Southern California that I started racing. You know, like I said, I could afford it. They're still expensive, but I always had my eye on drag racing. So I caught the eye of an owner that had a low budget team. Started out very humble beginnings. I worked basically worked for food. I worked. I worked. For, to, to race right. for, for nothing so but I started out you couldn't have started out further down the, the ladder than I did but I'm glad I did because I was able to parlay that into driving for a bigger team through the years won a championship and uh, here we are I own my own team I mean been in business for like 15 years now so or 20 years wow. on my own with Snap-on and Kicker and all the great sponsors so very exciting time. Cruz, we know you're super passionate about what you do, but we're curious, you know, what drives you, what refuels you off the track when you're at home? Well, I have a daughter now, so it's, uh, you know, I just love my daughter. She's going on eight years old, so, you know, priorities change a little bit, but I've always had this passion to, for racing so much so that that's all I would do morning, noon, and night. I would think about it when I got up, I, you know, uh, go to bed at night. It, racing was my entire life, and it still is, but... I share a little bit of that during the off time with my daughter, Raya, and uh, my girlfriend, Melissa. So, you know, it's one of those things where the desire to perform at this level and, and to do it, I feel like I have my best years ahead of me. I have so much more experience than I did when I started out that I want to put that to good use. So here we are. That's awesome. Well, man, I tell you, Kicker is super proud to be associated with you. We're blessed to be part of, you know, the team and helping out. And hey, now that we've got this killer PA system back here jamming the pits, what's that mean for you and your team and your guests and, and everybody in your in your organization? Well, having a brand like Kicker, number one, is, a, is an honor for us, really. I know it's a brand that goes way back. Heck, we've all heard of them. So for them to be, uh, you guys support us like you do, is, is really a, a, an honor for us. But we want to do our part on the racetrack and, and you know, and put your guys' uh, name out there. But as far as what you guys uh, just created for us was really cool. I, I didn't have any idea of the quality of sound and with all the noise, all the race cars starting, all yeah. the voices and all the generators running that we could still hear loud and clear uh, the PA system. So thanks to Kicker. Great product. Uh, you know, and, and uh, we have a lot of Snap-on guests that are invited to come out here as part of the customer service to say thank you to the Snap-on customers for buying the tools. So it's a great opportunity for us to speak to them, but not have to yell. So right. so they appreciate it. Like I say, the, the brand speaks for itself. It's quality. So, uh, you know, we, we're tickled to have them. Well, thank you so much, man. Look, what deal. So look, after what, 32 some years of blasting down the track, pulling four Gs, yeah. what keeps you pushing to do this, man? You know, it's amazing because you never get used to these cars. Like, my eyes still burn like everybody else. They're still loud, uh, but they accelerate. Every run is like a, a a new run. You never know what they're going to do. But I feel like I have a little bit less stress because I kind of know what the car is supposed to do and what it feels like to make a good run. So, like I said, as a driver, yeah, I've got a little few miles on me, but I think in this sport you can still – be a little older and still be able to re, uh, perform at a high level so that's what I look at as as you know I don't feel like I'm a deficient guy in this driver's seat I, if anything I, I hope I can bring something to it but the day's gonna come hey I'm an owner and I have a fast car the day's gonna come where hey I'm gonna want to look at a younger driver and somebody uh, you know to replace me so I can maintain ownership and maybe tune that guy into a championship or gal whoever so but it's a, it's a business. I look at it as a business. It has to make sense down the road. But I'm not looking. I say another four or five years in this seat, I'm good. Hey, I know you're running tight on time. You got a last qualifying run. Again, we're blessed to be with you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We love you, brother. You Appreciate you guys. Thank you. See you. Flash! This just in. Extra low frequency.
frequencies detected emanating from the heavens. Saucer-shaped objects confirmed all over the world. Unidentified flying K saucers spotted delivering Kicker's amazing new Comp Q Super Woofer. Built for precision. Built for abuse. Built for the future and benefit of mankind. Kicker's new Comp Q Woofer leaves audiences astounded and amazed as it reveals subtleties in their favorite music in a way that is sure to make women blush and grown men cry. The surround features Kicker's variable cross-section high-roll design, allowing extended cone travel and excellent cone control. It's firmly attached to the cone, reinforced with our iconic stitching. Betsy Ross would be so proud. The injection-molded solo cone and laser X cone brace combined in a single ultra-rigid unit. Venting in the brace relieves performance robbing back pressure. All this adds up to very low distortion and amazingly clean low bass. The progressive roll blue lace spider adds even more cone control at maximum excursion. The woven tinsel leads are sandwiched between the spider and the lace for durability and long life and to prosper. The spring terminal's heavy-duty square design accepts wires as big as 8-gauge or two 12-gauge wires for multi-sub installations. The high-temp voice coil is rumored to be spun upon the looms of the gods of polyamide fiberglass, along with a reinforced former for high strength and power handling. Now, add colossal magnets, plus a cavernous bump back plate, an extended pole piece created in a single forging, the likes that haven't been seen since the creation of Poseidon's Trident. And the result is a driver with superior control and effective heat dissipation that extreme performance demands. The all-new Kicker Comp Q is designed from the ground up to deliver everything you demand from a premium subwoofer. High output, deep, powerful, accurate bass, remarkably small enclosure requirements, stunning good looks, and not to mention the ability to frighten small children when turned up to 11. So there you have it. The all-new Kicker Comp Q subwoofer. Another zenith of innovation and epic majesty from Kicker. I built my first speaker uh, to be louder. I was playing in a band and the drummer played so loud and the keyboard that I had wouldn't play very loud and I went to my dad and said, I need a bigger speaker. It's a Fender Bandmaster, it cost $300. He dropped the newspaper and said, $300? Yeah, but he didn't say no. He said, is it something that we could build? And so that's how I got started building speakers. The thing that, that I love to see is a product that we made and get to stand back kind of anonymously and watch somebody take a look at it, listen to it, and go, wow. I think that's what really lights my fire is to make products that people enjoy and have fun with. As time went on, I heard people say, you know, Kicker's like a family. I actually didn't set out to do that. Uh, I thought it sounded kind of hokey. I thought they were insincere and in just saying that. After a few years, I realized, uh, yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's what we've got. And that's the key, is the good people on your team in the band that makes the band really great. Well, I think Kicker is primarily a lifestyle company. That's a little backwards of where I started. I thought we were a technology company and uh, we would make great products, but as time went on, realized that it's about people and uh, helping people to enjoy their life and what they do. And that's what I do, too. So share the love a little bit, I guess. <laughs>
everybody, it's John Myers here at the Kicker Unmasked Studios, live here in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Thank you guys for joining us on our Facebook and our YouTube channels. We are here every Tuesday night from 7.30 till about 9 o'clock, sometimes a little longer, sometimes a little shorter. Uh, just having some fun talking about car audio. We had a great show last week with David Justice talking about the design of the product. I think we've got a really cool show lined up for you this week with Scotty Leighton. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And just remember, you know, if you like the show, make sure you hit that like button, you know, smash it, you know, because we want to keep doing this. We want to keep having some fun with you guys. And as always, this is a two-way street. It is live, so if I screw up or if I say something kind of, it may happen, but just let it go. But definitely a live show, and it is two-way street. If you guys haven't seen the chat board, look at the chat boards. We are going to answer questions as we go through. And once again, if your question didn't get answered, remember you can go to support at kicker.com. Uh, the guys are always there to answer your questions, you know, help you design systems, design boxes, wiring questions. So we just like to have fun here. You know, car audio is not really... Uh, an area that everyone's got all the information on so it's nice to pull on other people and you know that's what kickery's here for we're here to answer questions for you help you out get that sound you're looking for so make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and make sure you tune in every tuesday night right here either on the facebook or the youtube channel and enjoy the show and like i say ask questions if there's anything you want us to do let us know any future shows that hey hey we really want to see this we want to see a set of cx8 800 on fire well, maybe we can do that. Maybe not. We'll, we'll do whatever we can. We can spice it up a little bit. So anyway, as always, we had a great dinner tonight. I think we had uh, five, five guys hamburgers, which I think we did like all their business for the week in one night. So that was good. Thank you, Steve and Becky, for letting us do that. Uh, once again, thanks to those guys. If it wasn't for them and their, their, their kind you know, willingness to let us keep doing the shenanigans, um, we wouldn't be doing it. So I'm glad they like it. Glad you guys like it. And let's keep it rolling. I think we're at show 65. I so uh, definitely uh, been doing a few of these. And it's a pleasure to be up here with you guys. And, and once again, we got to thank everybody that's helping on the team. Of course, we got Ernie on the control board back there. We got JW back there also helping out. We got Bill Frog answering questions in emails. And then we got Tim behind the camera back there as well. Wait a minute, Tim. Tim. Tim, we're we're live. You're supposed to be back there. That, oh. it's, come on, get up here. You might as well join us for the whole show. You know Scott, so it should be a good time. So, yep. Hey, this is what Tim looks like. In case you guys have just heard his name and never seen him, so we'll get him on the other side of the camera. And I guess we're talking to no one now, other than a couple red lights. So, yep. Just chase the red light. <laughs> It, that there, could be your face right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. I'm on this side of the camera, so I'm just going to be flush for the rest of the evening. Oh, so no. Direct your questions. Tim is going to answer those. I'm going to answer them. And once again, if you guys don't know how the show works, we're going to give away prizes. So what we want you to do is go ahead and pull my laptop up here, Ernie, and go to our, our giveaway webpage. It's going to be kicker.com slash umweekly. And that's where you're going to register to give away prizes. So if you notice as I scroll down here, and this isn't up to date because we're not hooked up to the, the web, but you know, we got three different prizes we're going to give away tonight. So we got, you know, of course, a grand prize, a second prize, and a third prize. Third prize is going to get EB200 wireless earbuds. And I don't know about you, Tim, but I really like those. Those things sound pretty darn good. They sound fantastic. Going to get the koozie. You're going to get the gray shirt. Uh, of course, second place is going to get a step up in headphones. They're going to get the Tabor 2s, which are Bluetooth, kind of over the years, bigger headphones. Yep, they're the on ears. And they're in really fact, good. Kind of cool. I've seen a couple of videos with camera guys actually wearing those, you know, some of the events that we, that we participate in. We'll talk about events here in just a minute, too. So the other thing is we got a grand prize winner, which is going to get the Cush NCs. Now, NCs means no, no comment, right? No, no. That would be noise canceling. Noise canceling. That's it. Well, that's kind of like no comment. You're blocking that out. So Yeah. But, yeah, the, the Cush NCs. And, you know, I use those every night, much to my wife's dismay, because i got my phone, you know, playing with my headphones paired Bluetooth and watching movies in bed while she's trying to sleep. So yep. she doesn't appreciate them, but I sure do. That noise canceling is really nice because it blocks out. Her snoring. No, I didn't say that, did I? Yep. Good mm -hmm. thing she's not watching tonight. So once again, registered with the prizes. We're going to need your name, your address, phone number, obviously, shirt sizes, and 
Bill is going to give you an email to let you know, hey, you guys won and you need to respond to Bill. Give him all that information so you can get your prizes. And you only have a certain amount of time to do that. It's you know, not often that people don't register, or they register and they don't pick up the prizes on time. But hey, it could happen, but we don't want to see that. I mean, we do this for a reason. We want you guys to have some kicker swag and you know, go out and tote that kicker banner with us and not only for us. So make sure you register for that contest. And I think uh, a couple weeks ago we had some products up here, didn't we? Yes, I believe tonight will be the giveaway for That's when we're gonna do it. your three enclosures. So we're going to give away the three test enclosures that I built to have fun with. And once again, these enclosures, you know, we build them just to put on the show and have fun. We decided, you know, we don't need any more enclosures around here. So we just decided to go ahead and give them away. So they're, they're not production enclosures. They're hand-built enclosures, you know. But once again, you guys are going to get those for free. So we're going to announce the winners of those three enclosures, I think, right after we do the Unmasked Weekly Live drawings, aren't we? Yes, sir. That sounds good to me. So moving down the line, we already told you, you know, hey, guys, you know, we had a great dinner. What what'd you have tonight for? Oh, you have to have the bacon burger. Yeah, well, that's what I had, too. So, you know, I could eat, bagger, eat burgers, you know, five days a week, and sometimes I used to. But we've got a lot of cool events. If you want to know, hey, you know, what's Kicker doing? Where are they going to be? You know, where can I go see those guys? Well, obviously, right now, you can't see us anywhere but on this channel tonight. So if you want to get out and about, you can still see the guys that are, you know, riding for our product, you know, represent it. I mean, you know, drag race, we've got Cruise Pendagon, we've got people in, in all types of motocross. But if you go to the website, the Facebook page, go ahead and pull this up over here. There we are. So here is the Kicker Facebook page. If we go down here to more. You can close your message there with David oh, Brown. I've got messages popping up. See, that's yep. a good thing i got Tim around here to yep. watch that. So you guys don't need to see all my messages. So click on more, and then we're going to go up here, and we're going to click on events. And this is where you're going to see all the Kicker events that are going on. Of course, you know, there's tonight's show right there, first one. We've got the Arena Cross, and the Arena Cross is going to be in Denver this week. And guys, if you can't watch it, what's really cool, it's going to be on CBS Sports. So, yep, yeah, we made the big time. We're on CBS Sports. Yeah, I think it rebroadcasts the next weekend after, and this weekend is the, I believe it's the final, it's the championship. Is that correct, I think, JW? I think so. Yeah, all right. he says yes, it is the finals, so it's going to be a heck of a show. These guys are going to be giving it all they got. And, of course, they're going to be riding with that, that kicker banner flying in the background. So, once again, tune in to the Arena Cross. A lot of great things going. Of course, Base Wars. You know, we can't talk about this show without talking about Base Wars. Uh, I don't think there's ever going to be an end to Base Wars, you know, events, is there? There seems to be a lot of them, and they've got them strung all the way out through the years. So there's a lot of opportunities to go out there and show your, show your stuff off. Yeah, and if you guys have never been to one of these events, make sure sure you, you look it up on our, our events calendar and, and even the base wars you know facebook page find out where they're going to be and when because you know if you guys think you've heard base but you've never been to one of these you've not heard base you know, oh yeah oh it's, yeah it's definitely experience i mean i you know the, the events that i've gone to it's just the creativity of some of you guys out there and what you're doing with our products and the extremes you're taking it to is absolutely incredible so once again, if you can get out and check out the base wars, you know, it's a lot of fun and you know, it, it's good for the whole family. Oh yeah. Yeah, usually they've got food vendors, so you know, you can spend the whole day there and enjoy it. As we scroll down a little bit farther, we've got the Lone Star Throwdown. I know you've been to that a few times, Tim. Oh yeah, it's one of my favorites. So what is your favorite part about that show? Just, there's everything about that show between the people and seeing the rides and just it, I have a lot of friends that go to that show and so it's a good opportunity to get out of you know get out of the house for the weekend go hang out with some friends have a couple of adult beverages and, yeah. and don't share worry stories. about that six foot rule either <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yep we still got to deal with that but once again if you guys can get out that that Lone Star Throwdown is a really cool event you're going to see some of the most incredible vehicles in the country are going to show up at that event and it's a great time. It's, you know, like Tim said, have an adult beverage with your buddies or, you know, or don't if you don't want to. But come down, check it out, have some fun. And, of course, the base wars, you know, these things just keep going on and on and on. So check those out. And don't forget, of course, you've got the uh, Master Tech Expo coming up in Phoenix in March. Uh, that's going to be really amazing. I mean, that, you know, Brian Schmidt, the guys, you know, the, the stuff that they do, I mean, they have really turned this industry, you know, basically on its ear, you know, with some of the, the techniques and the tools. So, if, you know, 
we're talking about, you know, we got an episode coming up next week where I think we're going to get Dean up here and talk yep. about becoming an installer. Well, if you're going to become an installer, guess what? You're going to have to have tools. Mm -hmm. How many to tools have... you got, Tim? I've got not nearly enough, and I <laughs> have a lot. There's never enough. There's never enough. In fact, I just bought another pair of toolboxes last week <laughs> just because I started unpacking at the house, and it's like, I don't have room for everything. Nope. So trying to get organized. But that, you know, the Max Master Tech Expo, they're going to teach you the skills, you know, with, you know, laser, CNC, you know, you know, upholstery, just pretty much anything. And of course, you know, select products. I mean, he sells all the tools, you know, all the router bits, all the jigs. And yeah, Mobile Solutions is great. Brian does a great job. Yep. And they have, if you look at their, what they have on the schedule, they have some great, great speakers coming to uh, talk. Yeah. And it's just, I think it's going to be a really good, really yeah, good show I for people. I think there's someone else going to be on there we can't even mention. I think it's going to be a, I, oh, yeah. I think that we were told not to mention, but yeah, I would like to have been there to see those guys. Oh, yeah. So it's oh, yeah. going to be a good time. But yeah, you know, the whole thing about doing a good job and doing installs is having the right products, you know, and obviously knowing how to use them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you, if you don't have the tool for the job, you're not going to get the job done. And if you get it done, it's not going to be done right or, you know as good as it probably could be so oh yeah make sure you check out the guys at mobile solutions and like i say the, the schools you know the tools i mean that is great base wars so we've got a lot of events going on and like i say just keep you know watching keep you know checking up on the kicker facebook page you know on our events and see you know if we're going to be near you guys and of course you know with the arena cross we can't forget lauren oh yeah no nope. you know, lauren out, is the road lauren. warrior yeah i just that guy is amazing i think does he do every one of them pretty close I think he does most of the arena crosses. He also does a lot of the American flat tracks. Yeah, and I've done I, those with I him. I think there's there's enough of the American flat tracks where he doesn't hit every single one, but he's I think almost at least every other one. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So it's nice to have people that you know can go out and f fly that flag for us and have some fun and and uh, you know Tim, why don't you tell guys what you do? You know, normally you're behind the camera back there. And I'm lucky enough to have you right here. Uh, what do you do for kicker? What is your major role? What is your title and my title is actually the manager of the installation and design team. So any of the demo vehicles that you've seen come out of Kicker in the last 20 years or so, I've either been a part of, and just in the last year, I've actually become the manager of that department. In fact, on some of you probably left parts of you in there, fingertips. There may be one or two where I actually have like a pick tool under a kick panel or oh, something. Oh, yeah. There's, exactly. there's, I, there, I have stuff in my toolbox. I'm like, I know I just had that. I want to know where all the 10 at. millimeter sockets went. There is a black hole somewhere that is just filled with 10, 10 millimeter, millimeter sockets. 10 millimeter sockets, 10 millimeter wrenches, and of course the 7 millimeter socket. You know, that 930 seconds. I mean, those tools, I mean, you can never have enough of those. In fact, we went to SEMA one year, and one of the companies was giving away a little package of three sockets. They were mm -hmm. the 10 millimeter sockets. It, yep, was, it was a, a short, shallow, medium, and a long. Deep, yeah. And a long, yep. And yep. What a perfect giveaway, you know, put your brand on that because you can never have enough of those. It was one of those deals where you, I, I went by the booth so often, they were like, wait a minute, I remember you. So then you were like, okay, I know I change a hat, fake mustache, jacket. Turn your shirt you, inside yeah, out. Yeah, anything you could just be like, oh, yes, I need more of those 10 millimeters. Yeah, that was the neat thing about going to same as, you know, some of the little giveaways they get. One year I went there, they were doing full CNC carvings, so, you know, they were doing like pistons they would carve with a CNC machine. and. You know, the line was like, you know, 50 people long, and it took like two hours to do each one. So you knew there was a lot of people that were wasting a lot of time in that line that probably weren't going to get what they uh, meant to see. No, no. But, you know, talking about Siemens CES, you know, you know, you do a lot of the show vehicles, and, you know, we've got other people. We can't build them all, can we? No, no. There's just not enough hours in the day to build every single vehicle that you take to different events and stuff like that. So that's where our guest will be is one, one of the assets that we've grown to love in our you company. Know, we've had the pleasure to work with a lot of really, you know, fantastic car builders. Some of them you guys have heard of, some of you haven't. And if you haven't heard of, you know, Scotty Layton and at Sick Chops, I mean, this guy builds some top-notch vehicles. I mean, absolutely incredible. And he's a little bit of a character himself, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he's good people. He's uh, one of my Ernie, favorites. Ernie, why don't you go ahead and pull up my laptop one more time? Um, he's probably going to shoot me for pulling this up, but uh, here's a, a picture of Scott. This is actually one of the kicker events and just happened to be there with, you know, all of our friends, you know, the company, you know, the people we work with. And you see Scott on the left and, of course, that bald, goofy-looking guy next to him, that's got to be me. And, of course, we got, you know, Randy and Sidney Weaver. They're also very, very good car builders. So, 
you know, this is a place where you've got to network, we've got to have a few drinks. I, that wouldn't happen to be a beer in your hand, would it, Scott? I think it probably was. And you just can't see mine because it's down below the screen. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we have a lot of fun, and we really get to meet a lot of really, really talented people. And I know, you know, you as well as me, we like to learn from these people. I mean, the creativity and the talent of some of these people are absolutely incredible. So why don't we go back to the regular screen? There we are. Um, why don't we see if we, can we get Scotty on the, on the horn? Yeah. Ernie, can you bring Scott in and let's, let's introduce Scott to the world. There he is. Mm -hmm. Hey, he's even got a nice t-shirt on. Where'd you get that? You, you sound like Mickey Mouse in my earphones. <laughs> well, maybe I am Mickey Mouse in your earphones. So, uh, Scott, how you doing tonight? <laughs> I, I might have to leave and try and join again because I can't hear anything. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound like right? anything. We can hear you just great, but you can't hear us very well. You no. sound like right. Mickey Mouse. I can't understand anything. <laughs> Should I talk lower? This way. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hello. There is no yep, no helium on the set, I promise you. But most people probably think there is or, or something winding us up here. Scott, why don't we go ahead and have you sign back out and sign on? We've got a lot to talk about. We really want to have you on the show. We're really excited. So... Uh, why don't you go ahead and try that, and uh, Tim and I will find a couple other things to talk about while we're waiting for you to get back on the line. And once again, folks, this is live. This happens, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, it does. So it's not like, you know, we're behind the scenes filming everything. And, and you know, being live, it's, it's a lot of fun. And the fact we get to do shows like this and, and have some fun with the products, we get to show you guys products even before. I mean, there's a couple products out there that, you know, aren't even available yet that we've shown on the show. And, of course, you know, the stuff we have demonstrated and... And some of the topics, you know, you know how to put in karate, how to test, how to tune. Working. Is it working? Because you are really loud right now, so I'm going to have to turn you down <laughs> just a little bit. How are you doing, brother? Can you hear Tim? Yes, thanks. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, I can hear you. Can you hear me, Tim? Yes, sir. All right. That, that's much better. I didn't catch any of the first part. It just sounded like I was listening to Mickey Mouse on crack. <laughs> well, you probably were. I, you know, he could have been my interpreter through there. But I hope you didn't mind me showing that picture. I mean, that was a few years ago. Do you remember when that picture was taken? Yeah, that was awesome. That was with Randy and Sydney Weaver. They're good friends of mine. And yeah, that was they're at awesome. one of your classic kicker parties, right? Yep, up on the twenty-first floor, wasn't it, Tim, of the Orleans? I don't remember which unlucky number it was, but it was. It, I think that was a. We had an evening with the the Street Outlaws yeah, gentlemen that I mean, came out and they've signed been up our there booth. many times, and you know we've had a bunch of the you know the people that we work with on a bunch of the TV shows, and you know obviously the car builders and some some industry you know people that kind of we all get together. That's kind of our, our networking spot. We're actually going to have fun and relax versus being at the show when it's you know pretty much all business. Oh, you yeah. know, on the show. Well, maybe not all business. We can't do 100% business, but that's where you're a little bit more focused. But, but It's always uh, a good time, that's for sure. Yeah. What year do you think that was? I, I can't even remember. I guess I could go take the picture. I'm, and I'm, I'm guessing with the this I'm, guess, I'm guessing with the beard, that was probably 18. I'm going to guess it was longer ago than, than Scotty thinks. And I just lost it off the screen, but it was probably you know, 16, 17, or 18. It was a while ago. But we've been working with you it's for a long years, time, right? Scott. So, yeah, yeah, well, and you had to remind me about that, didn't you? I mean, <laughs> SEMA is my favorite show, and, you know, that's where you get to see. I mean, I, I joke about this, you know, that I, you, you've been to the show, and, you know, people are like, well, yeah, what's it like? What's it like? I, you know, I tell them, I say, you know, there's so many million-dollar cars at that show that you trip over them and you don't even know it. And I used to joke about that. And I, I swear to God, honestly, it actually happened. Uh, we were at the, in the uh, South Hall, down to the bottom. I know it was Continental or Pirelli. But I, I don't even remember the car that was there. It, the base price was $4.3 million. That was the base price. And then you add the options on from there. And there were McLarens on each side of that car. And I'm standing there, and people were complaining that the McLarens were in their way to get a full wow. view of the car. And it's like, yeah, I, yeah, just, I was just it. kidding about that. But that's, that's the type of, you know, stuff that goes on there. And, you know, right along with that $4.3 million car, we've had a few of your vehicles on the show, haven't we, Scott? Yes, we have. We, we have built a great relationship over the years. I, I was trying to think back as talking to Tim earlier today or through this week, 
and he was rattling off all the cars that have either been in the booth or we've put product in. Been a kind of a reminiscent time for me thinking about how many cars we've built in the last 10 years with all of your stuff in it. So, I mean, Got it. it's been, Fact, it's been quite the, quite the haul. It's been going so when I first met you, you were still in uh, like Havasu, if I remember right. Yeah. Well, I was and, in Havasu for almost 20 years and now I'm out in North Scottsdale area. I've been out here for going on almost three years now. So what prompted that move? You got to put you uh, on the spot. <laughs> You Better know, availability uh, to car parts, right? <laughs> you know, uh, it was it was us. I had a daughter going into junior high, and we already had older kids go through junior high and have a suit, and we just wanted more opportunities for them. And then, so obviously, family. when we move out here, when we moved out here, the bottom blew out of everything. And but even still, we're still here. Our kids have great relationships with friends and. We have more opportunities. There's there's a lot more going on. I mean, everything's 30 minutes from me versus three and a half hours. So we're really happy with where we're at out here. And my yeah, shop's that, in my that's backyard. That's a big plus. Oh, well, it's perfect. Yeah, and it's Three a nice area there, back, too. My back patio, so. Yeah, you probably didn't have, you know, four inches of snow like we did last week. <laughs> no, it's been in the 70s. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, we almost hit that today here. So it's been a pretty good day in Stillwater. But, you know, you just, you know, we've had a lot of fun. Of course, you know, we got to ask you all the usual questions, you know, like, you know, what got you into building cars and motorcycles? You know, what, what made you want to do that? How did you get started? Because we're going to actually talk about next week how to get into this business. There you go. Um, if you're not in this business or born into it, don't get into it. <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to him. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I was actually born a, a heavy collision auto body man's son. And so I learned How the heavy was from he? him. Uh, he, well, we used to do heavy collision, <laughs> which was oh, okay. like complete totals, wrecks. Um, and then, then one thing led to another. We ended up having our own custom shops. And I really don't like the insurance end of this business. So I just I can't went blame for you. building. Yeah. So I just went for building full on customs and, you know, they say they're marry me projects and they are because you know, every inch of them, you know, so. Well, not only <laughs> that, you know, when you're working on these vehicles, you're working very closely with, with most likely, you know, the people that you're building them for. So you forge friendships and bonds there and, you know, networks and. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All of my customers have become longtime friends. I mean, at least that's what you would hope. Um, you know, that just every means you're doing it right. you get, that's what I would think, you know, every once in a while you get a, you get somebody that just wants something particular and they don't really care and they just want it because they want it. And then you don't form that relationship with that person. Um, but I tend to gravitate more towards the people that want to keep their cars to build them for because they have an appreciation because I believe that it's it gets a piece of my heart so it has a heartbeat oh, yeah. is what i like to say between my with my cars so well you, you put part of your life into those vehicles and speaking of Absolutely. friends sandy chimed in there at the bottom and wanted to say hi <laughs> hi sandy <laughs> well hi everyone at kicker so <laughs> well sandy's awesome i know you know i got another one of my buddies from the industry got rodney mason from ride tech he's tagged along tonight watching and and he just enjoys the show. So, you know, we reach out to a lot of different industries, as you do, you know, building cars. I mean, you got suspensions, you got wheels, you got tires, you got, you know, all the mechanical parts, you got the body work. I mean, and of course, you have audio systems, you know, that, that's going to be part of, of most of those cars, we hope, as well. Uh, so, what was your first audio system? What was your first car? How about that? Start there. Man, you guys are gonna hate me, but I no. <laughs> I used to do stereo competitions with a Honda Civic, and I used to run. Uh, should I say it? Um, I go used ahead. To run go Orion. ahead. Oh, I used to run. Everything was Orion, and I would always go for SBL. I had a Honda Civic hatchback. I think I hit 156 in it, and nice. you know, back in the 90s, that was pretty good. I think. Yeah, and, that was pretty smoking. Um, now, the Honda was so your first car. Yes. Yeah. 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 I didn't take so, back a minute there. You're like me. It's like, what the 
heck, what could it have been? Now, you know, you say that, Brandon, you know, when I actually had my store back in Nebraska, you know, that was one of my major brands. So, you know, definitely a good brand. And, you know, there's, there's no shame in admitting that you had that product. So there, <laughs> there's a lot of good products out there. And, you know, something else I want to point out, obviously, to everyone out there is, you know, we, we are a kicker house. That's what we do here. But if you got buddies that are in, into audio, just into audio in general, you know, tell them to tune in. You know, we're, you know, we're not going to, you know, put them off. You know, we're, we're all a big family one way or another. You know, audio is audio. So, uh, you know, if your, your, your buddies are not, you know, kicker fans, they might learn something, might have some fun. They might have some great ideas for us to do on a show. So uh, make sure you put the word out. And once you can hit that like button, you got to do that because we want to keep doing this. We've also got a question up here from our good friend Andy who wanted to know what came first. Was it the beard or bass? <laughs> uh, I would have to say bass. <laughs> That's funny, yeah, because you probably had bass before you were able to grow a beard. Oh uh, yeah, I'm still working sure. on one. I, can, you know, you both got me beat. So I well, just... this is this is all I can do. <laughs> Everything that comes in on the side is it looks like I got shot in the face with a shotgun. So let's talk a little deeper. When you're doing some of these audio systems, you know, is is there a general rule of thumb? How important is it to the people that you're building the cars for? Is it something they're asking for? Or do they just turn you loose? Say, you know, here's a budget, you know, or I just, you know, I want whatever, you know the badass car that you can build and I don't care what it costs you know how does audio fit into that I mean where does it, it fit into the, the the design stage well regardless I, I think the majority of my customers come to me for a reason and that is because I have a platform and it's it's vendors and suppliers like yourselves that I've engulfed myself in over these last you know 10 15 years that have just bent over backwards for me and support me with good product. And it, it just all, all follows suit. So when the customer comes to you and is looking for something specific, you have to give them good tunes, right? So right. we usually try and throw the best at it that we can. We try and maximize what we can. Um, I've learned just over the years how efficient we can be with just some minimal stuff or even more stuff so but either way you know you guys have always fulfilled my needs with all of the cars that we've ever done and and i don't i mean to me they just sound amazing it it they just get better and better as we build them i think yeah and once again yeah that's part of you know building a good product and you know having a good leader you know steve's a musician you know, he knows how, you know, things should sound. So he, he builds his products you know, to sound natural and to work right. So we have a lot of fun with that. And, you know, if you're, you know, building a, you know, half million dollar, you know, show vehicle, you, you don't want just something basic in there. I mean, obviously that person is not, you know, you know, scrimping and cutting every corner. So you want to put good audio in. And, you know, we've been fortunate enough to, you know, be part of a lot of really, really nice cars and, and a lot of your really nice cars as well. In fact, uh, I think Tim's got one pulled up here. I see on the computer here. He's probably going to ask you some questions about it. This is the first vehicle that I can remember that we had of yours in the booth, and that would be the, stepped on the Continental <laughs> Mark II. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I built that for David Hoekstra. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, we named that car May West because we actually found her signature in the trunk. Really? Uh, Autographed, yeah. When we when we blasted it, which is a crazy thing, because she would have had to lay in the spare tire well, and they had to close the trunk on her to sign it. But um, that was a that full custom crazy. car, wrote to shop chassis, crazy, crazy, and and kicker galore. Man, that car sounded so good, and it pounded. And that's you know kind of the thing you know I always stress. You know, it doesn't matter how loud it is. You know, it's got to sound good to you know want to listen to it and. You know, the better it sounds, the louder you want to listen to it. 100%. So, but yeah, that yeah. thing was absolutely beautiful. I mean, rear seat and the lead in that, uh, obviously with that, you know, low roof line. <laughs> Not getting a whole lot of people in there, but, you know, get the two most important people. I can't remember. Did that one have two tens or four tens? I think that had, I think that it had two tens. And I think we did, uh, there's three amps or, I mean, I think we had four yeah. amps in that thing. I, it, there were, we there, there were, thing there so were, there were, there were, yeah, I want to say, if I remember right, I believe there were four also. There were three that were visible and then one that was stashed. Yeah, we stashed one because we would Which separate. Which has been known to happen. Yeah, well, you know, and that was one of the things. 
there they to are. be able to add that extra amp and not have to run the crossovers and be able to have every speaker on its own amplifier just it lightens up. I mean, it just I, I can't put it in words, but it makes it so crisp and clear. And it's like you can grab that music right in front of you when you're listening to it. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's it basically, you know, that's the whole point of car audio is to take the car out of the picture. So you shut your eyes and it just, you know, you're just overwhelmed. And I, I tell people, you know, when I do the trainings, you know, on the road, when I used to be on the road doing trainings, you know, I, I ask people like, what do you sell? You know, what do you install? Or that car audio amplifier say like, no, you know, in reality, you're selling emotion. And that's what a lot of these cars are for, you know, the people you build, they are emotion. I mean, do you not agree? 100%. You know, and, it, and audio it and the, the cars are just a way to convey that emotion. So that's what gets really exciting. You know, when and I, we were talking about this, I think, yesterday. I can't remember if we was talking with you, Tim, or someone else. But to me, as an installer, you know, when you get a system done, I mean, that's what I want to see when I turn it on. I want to see that smile. That, that makes it all worth it. You know, when you see someone smile, you know you touch something. You know, you know hey, you did a good job. You know, I, these people that, you know, that plant crops have to wait a month to see them. I, I couldn't do that. That's just not <laughs> soon enough return on my investment. <laughs> no, nope. nice. it's far too long. Nice. Well, I always enjoyed, you know, I, I know that you wouldn't run everybody and their brother through those cars when we had them at SEMA. But every once in a while, you put somebody in the front seat of that car and they'd come out of that thing with a huge smile on their face. Whether it was that or the bus or the Oldsmobile or that was always a kick watching other people that didn't even have a clue of what to expect and they got in to sit in a car like that and listen to the audio completely different perspective oh yeah then you put into boot that it's a, a 50 year old car it's a hot rod it's it's a classic it's a muscle car whatever it may be but it's something you can go in and pound down the road and it just puts it in a completely different bracket yeah, oh, it yeah. really completes the package, and you know, you, you know, look, sound, you know, style. You got it all. So you know, and you know, when it comes to doing these cars, you know, doing these systems, you know, how, how, when do you start integrating the system into the car? I mean, what is the point where you actually start deciding, hey, where am I going to put speakers? Where am I going to put amplifiers? How much your your customers are involved in that? Say, like, hey, I want this here. I want that there. I want it to sound. I mean, what is your process? Well, anymore nowadays. You know, it's, it's, hey, we want that modern. So, you know, everything's got to be, you know, di di you know, digital gauges and LS motors and fuel injected and good brakes. And but but stereo plays into it. It's 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 all, hey, I want it to hook to my phone. I want to be able to play Pandora. I want to be able to play my music list I, and and then clean, simple. So all of that design and build up because not only do I do it that way then I know I can get the parts and I can start getting parts and I don't have a problem getting parts you know six months you down the road to. a year <laughs> deep into it well yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes it's a struggle but but I try and preemptively attack this moving forward in the early dis design stages that way we know where to move forward with it yeah, and I, you pretty much do everything all in house. Am I correct? Yeah, I, I, I'm a micromanager, so I try and do <laughs> as as much as I can. I just I I have a really hard time letting other people do things for me. So, and that's probably yeah where I've gotten into some trouble because I just will figure out how to do it myself. And you know, I, that's actually once again, how I, I got group, into this. Yeah, I have a good group of of that we use i mean ron mangus i mean we got a great okay oh, ronnie guy yep and, you know and, and i i will spend a couple days down there just helping them fab stuff or you know we'll talk about strategically where everything needs to go just because it's all a big part of it it's not just aesthetics anymore it's it's aesthetics with a purpose so Right, and I definitely agree with you, you know, having a game plan up front and working with all the people so everybody knows. Um, I just got involved with another builder, and, and like I say, it was, 
we did this really, really incredible car. I mean, well, he did. I shouldn't say we did. But, you know, we spec'd out the audio system at where we wanted everything. The customers are happy with it. And, you know, they did the fabrication. The car went to the upholstery shop. The upholstery guy called me and said, uh, which was Tracy Weaver. Um, I don't know if you know Tracy <laughs> from Recovery Room. Yeah. Tracy and I used to work yeah. side by side when I had my store. But he called me up and says, hey, we got to do something different. Where they put all the stuff in the trunk, I have no depth to even put speakers in the rear deck. So, you know, oh. having one game plan and the car being at two different, you know, shops and not everybody being on the same page, yeah. that gets kind of complicated. And in fact, you know, Tim and it, I have done, done a lot of that too, where, you know, you get a vehicle that, you know, you're right in the middle of something, you jump in and do yours and that's got to go to somebody else. And then they do something that totally changes what you planned on doing. So, it, oh, yeah. it can be a challenge, it can so, be a lot so, of fun. I like that to call that cohesiveness where I, I'm pretty much a one man band anymore. And if there's something wrong, chances are I did it. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to design something when you do it yourself, but when you have five people trying to do one man's job, it's, it's really hard to get everybody on the same train. Yeah. And I know, you know, even from, you know, the days that, you know, working, starting with kicker back in 96, um, you know, doing the show vehicles when I was, you know, building them, you know, people ask me, says, is that the way you planned it? Did you plan that out? And I'm like, actually, no, I said something completely different in mind. But as I went, the car changed my mind or changed the path I went. And I guess that's the advantage. And if you're trying to do everything is you can go where you need to go. The only vehicle that I think ever came out the way that I really wanted it and designed it was our little Ranger pickup, if you remember that one, Tim. That was just a little before my time. I've seen a lot of pictures and images of it. Little 98 Ranger. We put <laughs> five 18s in the cab of an extended cab Ranger pickup. Oh, yeah, that yeah, was probably it pretty was low. Absolutely <laughs> crazy. But I laid the whole bed out, I mean, with all the amplifiers. And if I remember, there were I think there were uh, 12 amplifiers in there. There were six ZR1000s and six ZR360s, you know, in that vehicle. And, you know, I, I literally, and this is, like I say, the only vehicle I've ever done that came out exactly the way I pictured it in my mind because it took me four days on paper measuring and drawing and, and graph paper <laughs> to scale long before computers would do all that. So that was sure. the only vehicle that ever absolutely the way I pictured it, it you know, came out exactly the way I thought it was going to. But other than that, you know, it is kind of fun though as you get into these vehicles and it changes, it gives you new ideas, you know, new places to go and you know, different things to try. Right. We've got about 20 minutes, just over 20 minutes left in the enter the drawing for tonight. We'll yep. close that at 8.30. And actually we got the two drawings going on. We've got, of yep. course, the, the Well, you know, the, that, other, that other drawing is already closed, I believe. Yeah, but, but we got to tell them who wins it. So. Well, yeah, that'll be afterwards. <laughs> yeah, those three people. So you're going to hear that. So if you've entered to win the enclosures, you know, make sure you hang around after the Unmasked Weekly giveaways, the, the three prizes there. So we're going to tell you who won the enclosures. And then uh, we'll have to get the shipping department involved and get them shipped out to you guys. Oh, yeah. This is another one of my favorites because I loved how simple this install was with just being a single amp install and how just it sounded phenomenal when it was finished. Yeah, this Volkswagen it, was amazing. We, we've based a lot of our, our systems off of how simple that is moving forward because... I think we streamlined it, and and they really do sound good. And if I remember right, that's actually our booth, isn't it? That is actually our booth at SEMA, and that was 17? That was, yeah, 17 maybe? And what a cool Eight. color that car was, too. Oh, yeah, the color, uh, I couldn't get enough of it. That might have been, yeah, 17, I think you're right, yep. So Yeah, we've definitely been doing this a long time, and, you know, we're going to continue to do so. So, because you debuted Overcast the year before in Acuware's booth, correct? That's right. Yeah, that was in sixteen. Yeah. And which car was that, Tim? That was the Concept Blazer. That in it was a sixty. Well, hold on, I got it written down here. One sixty-one, because they didn't make yeah. a two-door. They had the was it a three-door in that body style? No. No, they made a two-door, but it was a carry-all or a Suburban. They never made a Blazer. 
That's right. That's right. It was so the longer wheelbase. Yeah. Dad, remember that vehicle. I just didn't remember the name of it. Some of that stuff gets past me as you get older. It all kind of blends together. I love the turn signals on that. The, yeah, the semaphores the, are phenomenal on that thing. Yeah, every bit of that car. Yeah, was, I mean, it scared the pants off me when people got near some of your cars. It's like, don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I learned to let go of a lot of that because, you know, it's just the nature of the beast, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's one of the things that, you know, I've, you know, the other lesson I've learned over this, if you're going to drive it at all, something's going to happen. <laughs> you're going to get a little chip. Yeah. You're going to get a little scratch. So just, you know, go into it going, if I drive it, things are going to happen that I have no control over. You know, definitely well, you not can't always put these either. things. You can't put them on a pedestal because if you do, then you'll never enjoy it. If, well, if you actually get in and enjoy it, that's what and they I agree. go for. They're, I mean, they're cars. I mean, they're meant to drive. Yeah. I will never own anything I can't at least drive occasionally. You know, I may not be a daily driver, but, you know, but I remember, you know, growing up in, in the Midwest in Nebraska, you know, the Autorama show, there was a guy there that had, and I think you, you know, 69 Boss Mustang, you know, and he had gold-plated rotors, gold-plated valve cover. I mean, it's like gold-plated rotors. Obviously, he didn't drive that car at all, but what a waste <laughs> of a cool car. That's a little bit of the install right. of the the bug there that was nice and clean and simple yeah the 1005 all the qs crossovers yeah the back back seat hinge forward and drop down and that is a nice thing with those multi-channel amplifiers you can do an entire install with just a single amp and you know it's not always about having you know a gazillion watts of power it's using the power effectively and you know pr you know proper speaker placement now you know, you do things, you know, a little different than some of the other car builders, and this is actually a compliment to you, Scott, is uh, you can see our products in the cars. <clears throat> I know a lot of people want this stuff hidden, you know, absolutely buried, and, you know, I, I kind of go both ways with that, but, you know, we re really appreciate the fact that, you know, you don't mind showing our products off, and, you know, especially in these vehicles, and there's the Blazer right there, the 61. Yeah. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, what a great place to take a picture, too. So yeah, do you remember was, uh, the system in this one? Yeah, that was it was same same premise, all IQI. I believe uh, it was a real similar setup to that Volkswagen. I think I think we did two of the the L eight sub boxes. Is that what those mm -hmm. are, Tim? Those the LQ eight. Uh, QB eights. Yeah, the QB eights. The QB eights. That's what they are. And then uh, six and a halfs in the rear, six and a halfs in the front, and then. I think we had like three or four amps in this one also. Yeah, with the back wheels. How big are those back wheels? They're like 30 inches in diameter. You almost can't even see the tires on there. 24 15s. Yeah, 24 yeah, inches tall, 15 inches. That's just the rim. That doesn't count the tire, but that looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it kind of looks like a Hot Wheel, and you know, I wish they would make a Hot Wheel out of that because that would be really cool. Yeah, yeah. And once again, you know, great color on that. Um, Tim, does, do we have any pictures of the bus? Yes, the Volkswagen bus. Yes, that was the, the bus was cool too. That was the six. Another one that was in our booth. There it is. Yeah, yeah. I forgot where was the last time I saw you guys with that bus. I remember it might have been at the Ignited show. One year, I mean, that might have been the year after that it was in the booth but yeah that's another neat vehicle the, the smoothie yeah, wheels fun. we cruising that thing up and down las vegas strip we had nothing but a blast in i mean how can you not 25 hertz to life hit that <laughs> like button yeah quit it <laughs> walk away don't look oh come on <laughs> hey you're here aren't you <laughs> try to scare people away <laughs> So what other kind of fun systems have you done? I mean, what do you want to do? I mean, what, what, what is your goal? I mean, if you could do your ultimate system in your ultimate vehicle, what, what would that be? Oh, man. I, I, I Definitely want, putting you on the spot there. I, I, I would just like to live in the base room in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> the boom room? Yeah, the boom room. I mean, that, You are glutton for punishment. How many GB oh is that room, side. Tim? Uh, we don't disclose the DB of that room. It's way up there. Because <laughs> yep. it's way it's up there outside. Wait, yeah, we, wait, we do huh? not disclose the DB of the boom room. 
Is that, that is for always, legal no. purposes? That's, that's always up for debate. And always for legal purposes. Uh, you know, it's like, you, know, you knew this was going to be harmful to somebody. You let them in there. Like, no, we have no idea how loud it was. Yep. And well, talking about, you know, building that. vehicles. <laughs> We had a, a, a little incident at one of the events, actually, in Las Vegas, where, if you guys remember, Alma Gates Bronco, you know, we, we had that. We took it to one of our big air bashes, and, you know, you guys probably have you know, never been to a big air bash. I think you've been to a couple of big air bashes, haven't you, Scott? Back where we had the, the parties in the parking lot at the Palms and the Hard Rock. Yeah. But we told the Hard Rock, we had the loudest vehicle in the world at the time. You know, and we're going to have them like, yeah, yeah, no problem, bring it on. So it was about 4 o'clock that day or 5 o'clock. We're setting everything up. We thought, okay, we're going to, you know, test it. So, you know, of course, we hit it a couple times, you know, real quick. And next thing you know, the manager came running out of the building. What was that? You can't do that. You can't get that. And just freaking out. You can't turn this. Like, dude, we told you. It's the loudest vehicle. He said, I had no idea what you meant by loud. He said, the 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 switchboard lit up and people want to know what the heck's going on where's there an explosion you know it's a, some major mechanical you know malfunction but yeah they wouldn't let us turn it up again which was kind of a disappointment so we, yeah. we told you guys so i no longer called it the hard rock to me it was after that was the soft rock yeah you know, we out yep. the go. hard rock <laughs> yeah that's well there's funny. that 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 great quote from one of our videos of uh joe aiken with Alma after the manager had left, and he was like, I guess we're too loud for the hard rock. And she said, if you're too loud, you're too old. Yep. So, And I always tell people, if it's too loud, it's because I'm old. You know, you know, I <laughs> like to feel that, you know, turn it up. And, of course, you know, I'm not hearing as well as I used to, but don't always like to admit that. But I like it loud. You know, the wife really doesn't care for it a whole lot, but uh, you got to take it in moderation when she's around. So, Oh, yeah. So... Your ultimate car, if you could build any car, period, Scott, your, your favorite build, like someone came and said, here's you know, an ungodly amount of money, go out and get whatever you want and build it. What would it be? What car? Or motorcycle? Uh, that's, a, that's a million dollar question. It's a loaded yeah, well, that's, question. It'd be a million dollar car, too, I'm sure. By the time you yeah, got done with it, it would be awesome. You know, I've had so many favorite cars over the years that I've done, and I, I just don't. I don't know that I would even want one for myself. <laughs> well, what would you want to build just, for some, someone? Someone came to you and said, build me one. Build, whatever you want to build, build it for me, but uh, whatever you want to build. What would be the next build you would want to do? I, but it doesn't really matter as long as it's different. Like, I like everything that's different. I don't... See, I like that. That's a great answer. I just answer. don't want to build the same thing. I don't want to build the same thing. So I want to build something cool and unique and, I mean... I'd do another 60 Cadillac. If I could keep any of the cars that I ever built, it would have been the Blazer. I, the Blazer is my favorite that car was cool. I built, probably. You know? um, but we, we had more fun in that Oldsmobile right there on the screen. I mean, that thing's probably got close to 14,000 miles on it. The guy's driven it cross country, and he had, we've had that's so much fun be. in that car. Yeah. That, yeah. That's what I love that's, about that car is it's not one that you typically see somebody build. But he had a great story to go along with that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was his. Uh, it was his mother's car, and his mother, or it was his grandmother's car, and his grandmother gave it to his mother. And his mother now, today, is what 102. Really? Wow. And uh, she, yeah, she gave him that car and said, "Rodney, don't cut it up." And uh, we really didn't. That's the, the factory color. Um, we put a chassis underneath it, put an LS motor in it, and um, Rose is her na his mother's name, but his grandmother's name was Sylvia, so we named the car Sylvia after his grandmother. Oh, cool. Um, and Rose has driven that car several times, up and down the coast to Pismo and cool. all around Bakersfield. That car's seen a lot of miles on it with, with his mother in it which is pretty awesome so and with the tunes jamming too i hope <laughs> obviously I, I would hope so you know <laughs> I, I i know i know when we drove that car to loveland we were rocking some music so you can't have a road trip without music that's for sure <laughs> music and some friends and when you get there have some adult beverages and kick back and reflect on the day yeah oh the go. power tour that just reminds me of so many things 
<laughs> hey, I think, I think there's tour. a... We, <laughs> we did the power tour in a farm truck, and, and we took a... a we took a bullfrog with us, and that's how we listened to music the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's actually a picture in here, if I'm not mistaken. I want to say it might be the last picture of when you guys pulled it out before you guys actually started working on it, when it was all covered in dirt. I think so, Is that a clock yeah. in the center of the dash? I, be I believe, is that a clock in the center of the dash? Yes, it is. Hey, Lexus has got nothing on them. <laughs> yeah. They weren't the first to do it. There it oh, is. Oh, there it is. Oh, my God. Yeah, it sat in storage for like 27 years or 30 years. Wow. You know, I've actually you know, had some cars in my shop that ended up looking like that after doing woodworking next to them for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's usually how they look when you get them back from the upholstery yep. shop. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the customer is like, I can't believe you washed my car for me. He's like, I kind of had to, because yeah, I didn't want to give it back to you this way. We, we rattled some dust off of it. Yeah, that, that car, I thought that was so, and that was actually, uh, you won a pretty prestigious belt at SEMA that year with that car. Yeah, Someone the belted them at SEMA? shop belt. <laughs> yeah, the best on RS, and... uh you uh, dethroned, what is it, two or three time reigning champ? Uh, Mis no, Mr. Ken did? Time. Kid was it did. one time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my, my, my good old buddy. Yeah, that was, I thought that was pretty cool. We, li we like to battle. <laughs> Which is cool. <laughs> it keeps the excitement up. Absolutely. Well, and they had the Mustang, that was another cool car. And I think I remember, didn't we have your 69 Camaro? Wasn't that at the Roadster Show in Murphy's booth? Yep. No, we had the, I think we had the Caddy. It was a 59 Caddy there. And, uh, well, that was another year, yeah. I, for some reason, yeah. I was thinking there was, because I know we had a, a Camaro there. I thought that was also one of yours. But no, it was all we had a IQ black product. I, that was a triple black one, convertible. Yep. All IQ product. What Actually, a cool here, car that was. It, I don't know if you can see this truck in the background. Yep, we see it. Oh, is that what you're building? Is that what you're building That's the me now? This one right now, yeah. So what's going in that one? It's already done. It's it's all IQI. We just did a single amp with a single ten, uh, two six and a half, and and I think it's a Tim. What it was is a five hundred four. Uh, no, it's a one thousand five. Yeah, it's the yeah. 1005, and I'm guessing you did the the kick panels all active, so there's no crossovers, all actively crossover through the IQI? 100%. So each speaker is on its own channel, which the thing, not even tuned yet, because you haven't got your hands on it, but it sounds <laughs> really, really good. Oh, so. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Is that a, will that be something you'll be bringing out to SEMA this year? That's the idea. Oh, you wow. know, one of the things I'm noticing, I don't know if, you know, a lot of other people have noticed, but nice, clean shop you, you have to work in. And that that's kind of the key, too. Can you, I don't know if you can see those gauges or not. Oh, yeah. man, you got the, is those, are those the new Dakota Digitals? Dakota Digital did these all one off for us. Nice. Oh, wow. Oh, and then. I like the, the chrome bars Ooh. and the headliner, too. Nice touch. Wow, you went the, the opposite direction with the wood bed floor. Yeah, everything's horizontal. Almost like a guitar fret. So even if, yeah. you look, if you look through, it's all horizontal. Wow. Cool. So and what this is, is it's, uh, it was made, it's what they used to cover drum sets with from Delmar Products. Okay. Same thing they use on guitar faces also. I was just saying, if you didn't hear me, that the chrome bars look like guitar frets almost. You know, the way they're, they're done horizontal. Head, headliners all done. Is that uh, Mr. Magnus's work also? It is. Let's see how... Sneaky a picture. Ron does some here. absolutely amazing interior work. So. 
And he drives around that old Riviera too. <laughs> oh, he's gonna make me. He's gonna make me jealous now. Uh oh. He's gonna show us the engine. There you go. Oh. Yeah. oh man. Mm. Yep, I'm just almost speechless here. Try to contain yourself, Ernie. <laughs> yeah, Ernie's back here <laughs> oohing and on. You can't hear him. But we can. We can hear it echoing through the room in here. But yeah. So no. Oh, yeah, wow. That's you know, know. total package. It's it's everything, right? It's got a, it's got everything. It's got all the good stuff. So you you never know what'll happen. We'll see what happens if you guys need a uh, a truck for SEMA or what the deal is. But you know, I'm always down for anything you guys throw at me. Definitely crossing our fingers. We go to SEMA this year. For sure, my toes are crossed. Come on, it's it's like it's gonna be. It's like nothing ever happened already. We're just gonna make it go. Let's do it. <laughs> well, I think we've got two years to make up for when we get there, don't we? <laughs> yeah. That that means you need to tell Steve we need uh, like twice the size booth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Since we're not doing CES, we might as well, you know, like really ramp the, the SEMA booth up. We kind of have done that, so you know. It's, same is so much fun. I just, I really, really enjoy the show and, you know, getting to work with you guys. And, and you know, it's, you know, it's fun where, you know, Tim and I, you know, work with a lot of builders on the phone. But, you know, when you actually get to work with you side by side, I mean, that, that really, you know, solidifies that bond. And it's just, you know, it's friendships that will never end. And that's the neat thing about this industry is, you know, we've taken our hobbies, you know, all of us, including you, and turned them into a career that you can have fun and actually make a decent living off of. And, you know, people enjoy it. You know, they, you know, pay money to come see what you do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I couldn't do what I do without the support of you guys. I mean, like 100%. So anytime I get the chance to support you back, it, like I, I'm all for it because it's, it's a, it's a great relationship for sure. So. Uh, one that's going to continue for many, many, many years to come. So to the unforeseeable Absolutely. future. Absolutely. Well, hey, I mean, I, I built this truck this year. It, it, even in all the conditions that we're in, it's like I, it's not going to slow me down. You know, just just going to keep keep pounding away. So, well, that's been the cool you know, thing. This industry has not slowed down. If anything, it's gotten busier. No, it's gotten everything's gotten busier for sure, and more yeah, expensive. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, about ready to go there too. <laughs> I mean, I can't b believe, I mean, I, you know, pricing wood and stuff for installs. I, you know, I, I built a workbench at my house, you know, and paid $32 for a 4x8, you know, MDF three-quarter inch. And, yeah, I remember paying, you know, in the low 20s for it. And that was on Monday I bought it. And I went back Friday and needed some more, and it went to $53, you mm -hmm. know, from you know, 32 to 53 in, you know, four days. And it's just, it's crazy. But, you know, and I... You know, some of these poor companies, you know, good thing we don't make head units, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, trying to get a, a head unit now for anything is, is crazy, so. Yeah, it's tight. You know, amplifiers we're doing okay with, you know, speakers, you know, we're, we're doing okay with, you know, mm -hmm. subwoofers, enclosures. You know, some of the stuff is slower. As we know, don't, don't even bring up the other one because we know it's on the way. It's just taking a lot longer time. <laughs> but, you know, it's just <laughs> the way this whole industry has gotten in every industry. I like that, Tim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Oof. yeah. Just back off, you know. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pump the brakes, yeah. there, buddy. Switch gears. <laughs> yeah, if we could only, uh, you know, speed everything up, and you know, if things we were the way they were, you know, three years ago, but they're not, and they're never going back that way. Yeah. But, so, but you know what? It, it's sometimes it's good to trim the fat and move forward because everything will be a lot more streamlined. That's for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Clean out some of the riffraff, and I think we're about to the. the the registration end for the contest. Yep, I'm pretty sure the contest is closing right now. So, yep. so I hope you guys have registered did, to win did, the uh, unmasked week. Did you register, Scott? To win? Did you need <laughs> me to pick a number though? Because I, I mean, I can be there in like five minutes if you need me. I mean, hey, come, come on, on down. <laughs> we got Bill. Bill's back there handling it. Bill's back there with the electronic dice, you know, the slot game Perfect. back there. So I don't know how he actually picks the winners, but it's actually pretty cool. But. So do you have any plans to come out to any of the good guys shows this year? Well, we're just kind of uh, looking at what's going on. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of good guys that are back to back to back to back. And I just, we're trying to pick our battles right now. 
Um, yeah. That, unfortunately, we can't do them all. I, yeah. And it'll be fun are, to do are them Are you all. guys doing any? Are you guys doing the one in Texas? Or are you guys thinking about Texas? Or what's going on with that? I, I, I will actually be attending my first Good Guys show the the season opener in Arlington at the Texas Motor Speedway. That'll be the first one. Or not, it's not in Arlington, but at Texas Motor Speedway. That's the first one that a, yeah. I'll be going to. The, between Dallas and Fort Worth. Have you, early February, right? Oh, no, no it's, uh, it's, yeah, early, early March. March. I think it's the second full weekend of March. And I think, I, I know I'm planning it's... on going down to that one as well on my own. I've, we're not I've... doing it as a company. but Yeah, no, I don't think we're doing it as a company. I know that we have built a PA and we've supplied a PA for them that they use for the road the course, autocross. the autocross section. Yep. So they can make announcements and play audio and stuff like that. But I'll actually be driving down in my truck for that show. I actually will be uh, driving down with JD and some of the guys from Oklahoma City. Nice, nice. All right. Um, we've contemplated going there because it's such a good show. Um, but then the next weekend is Scottsdale, and then it's Pleasanton, and then it's Del Mar, and then it's and Sacramento the, Autorama. So it's like. Those are yeah, all a whole lot closer lot than on. the. Yeah. yeah so, if, and, you know, for our viewers out there, if you've not been to any of the good guy shows, too, I mean, even if you're, you know, not a, you know, more of a car audio fan than a car fan. I mean, there are some amazing vehicles. And yeah, there's some great installs. You get some good ideas, but just really, really cool shows. We've been working with good guys, I mean, for as long as I can remember. Yeah. You know, I, was I remember the same. we've done a couple, I mean, I could probably five giveaway cars, you know, that they've done that, you know, we've worked on. So we've had a great partnership with them as well. So it's just, it's sure. so much fun to work with, you know, the, you know, the, the good guys, the, the, the sick chop guys, you know, all these guys, you know, that, we're all about, you know, having fun and doing what we love, and we're fortunate enough that, you know, people enjoy it, too. So that's why we keep doing this. Show some more cars, Tim. Show more cars, Tim. I think I heard Ernie <laughs> babbling in the background. I think, he, I think he wants to see this Mustang. I wouldn't mind seeing that Did Mustang. Did I lose you guys again? Nope, you haven't lost us. We're still here. No, nope, we're still here. There's the Mustang. Hello. Oh. Apparently he can't hear us, but we can you? hear him. Can you hear me now? Testing. Earth to Scott. Just sit there and smile. I think he, <laughs> I think he may like lost, I lost his... you again. I wonder if his earbuds. I wonder if his oh. earbuds passed. Yeah, I wonder if the battery died on your earbuds. Disconnect your earbuds. Well, of course, the battery died. It should have disconnected the Bluetooth. Yeah. I. Not sure how that works, but hopefully we'll get Scott back. Um, Tim's going to go ahead and keep scrolling on, you know, some of the pictures of some of these cool cars that, you know, it's just, I love looking at, you know, some of the creativity and the level of craftsmanship, you know, that Scott and some of the people that we've worked with, you know, and the, the one thing about a lot of these cars is, you know, a lot of people don't see the work that's in the cars. And, you know, several of the builders have told me, said, if, People don't know what I've done to the car. That's one of the biggest compliments. And, you know, they may have reworked the car completely, but they did it so flawlessly and so, you know, like it should have been done in the first place. I'm like, back. Are you back, Scott? Yeah, I'm back. All right. I don't know. Where I think I had, a, a phone, I, I had a phone call that interrupted me, and I tried to get rid of it, and then it disconnected the sound. <laughs> Yeah, oh, tell these yeah. people you, you got more important things to do for a little uh, bit here. I know. Hey, yeah, man, 69 I'm, Mustangs, gorgeous. Yeah, that's a yeah, fun car. That, that's a car you get in trouble in real quick. I can imagine so. I'm sure that's not a stock boss motor in that thing. John Cozzi, uh, 529. That's... Youch. Yeah. That's a whole, yeah. lot of, whole lot of Mustang. I think Tim and to enjoyed tuning that one. I couldn't get him out of that one for a while. <laughs> that was the one that was on the ramp by the Ford booth. I think that's the picture yeah. of it on the ramp by the Ford booth. Yeah, that's actually, and that was, you You just gotten the Ford award, I think it was probably that, that night before. Yeah. yeah tell, tell the viewers what the award was. I mean, that's, that's quite an honor. It was a Ford design award, so the guys from Ford really dug the concept of just taking, taking a Mustang and doing something with it that nobody had done, but yet keeping all of the original like mystique about it we didn't slice and dice it we just tightened it up and, and you know flip flop some colors around um that the gray that's on there is an avalanche gray it's actually a 50th anniversary color 
Um, and then the funny thing about that car is, is it was supposed to go Wimbledon white and all the black was supposed to go chrome, which I thought it would have represented a really classic, cool, just resto mod. But at the end, the owner kind of put that twist in there, which it works. You know, it, it, it's definitely a, a standout Ford liked piece. It. Yeah, Ford definitely liked it. So, um, yeah, I know that guy. That, that was, that, yeah, yeah. That, I think that was about three and a half years ago, man. That was a, that was a while ago. That was when I first moved out here. I think when we did that. I was gonna say I think so, that was I think that was the last SEMA that we actually were able to attend. I this think was, was 19. nineteen. Yep, yep, that was nineteen. One hundred percent. I really wish there was a picture in here of you with that belt from Roadster Shop and the way they trailed you around that next day with the cameras. <laughs> And you could hear people like the champ is here, the champ is here. I mean, it was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was it was a really it was a lot of fun. I thought that was pretty cool for you guys playing the Rocky theme I, I, on a ball frog in the background. <laughs> I I didn't hear any of that, Tim. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I just you know I mean I I couldn't Camaro. do a lot. Yeah, I couldn't do a lot of this without my customers, you know. But I suppose my customers couldn't do it without me, so. You know, I've just been really blessed to be able to have the clientele that I have and the rain that I have and to be able to do what we do with the partnerships that we have. So it's, to me, it's a win-win because I get to do it every day and enjoy company of you guys and other great vendors as well. So It's a shame you didn't lower that Cadillac a little bit. It'd probably look a little better, a little lower. <laughs> yeah, I know. Those cars look 60 feet long. Yes, and then you put them on the ground like ice. that. And it yeah, looks like a porch. It, they're fun. They're fun, that's for sure. Should have let like the a grass spaceship. go a little bit longer. The after <laughs> was a spaceship. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Ernie actually had a question back here. He said, one of your typical, like one of these full custom builds like this, what's your timeline look like? Uh, like, do you just, is it whenever it gets done, it gets done? Or do you like, I've got a month or I've got a, or not a month. Geez, that's ridiculous. <laughs> like a year. Say, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I was like, I'm, I'm starting to sound like the guys that work on the TV shows all the time. Like, oh, we'll just, we'll crank this out in an episode. Uh, By the magic of television, <laughs> be in the ground. Yep, you're right. I wish television ruin, wouldn't ruin it for all of us, but it, it has put uh, tight timelines on everything. But realistically, 12 to 18 months. Any, you know, I like to keep them around 12, but by the time you get parts, you know, you know, I mean, it's 18 months isn't bad. It doesn't, and then the design and the style isn't changing times because it's three years down the road and then you yeah, wore the guy's checkbook out because he's he's paying you every month you know and or the trend so changed kind of you know, the things. time you started right so right. so I, I curtis is asking did the caddy have air ride and we're starting to lose you again there scott starting to get awful quiet you got someone else trying to call you yeah, yeah, there you go no no there we go yeah, yes, the, yes, the Cadillac had air ride. Full custom Roadster Shop chassis and Cadillac CTS V motor. Nice. So, typically, I mean, are you starting these cars and doing one car from start to finish, or do you, are there a couple of them that, I guess I see a second one in the back over there. On average, uh, how many cars are in progress at one time in your shop? One. One, so you focus on the one. Yeah. Now that's definitely got to be that Cadillac frame. I'd love that front bumper on that frame. That these pictures right here were from Roadster Shop. So I actually sent that car to them, and they chassisied the car, and then they sent it back to me so I could finish it. How cool! Yeah, so I've done probably about a dozen cars like that with them. Probably another dozen where I've just ordered chassis from them, but I try and. I and just focus on quality, not quantity. I'm not, I, I've done the, the gamut where you have two or three of them going on at once and it just, it trying to get parts ordered and facilitate moving forward on them is just a headache and a hassle. That can be a, you know, a juggling act. 
And uh, yeah. Robert's asking, have you ever refused to customize too clean of a classic car? Anyone ever brought you anything and said, I'm just not going to touch that? It's just. Uh, Has that mean, ever happened? No, I mean, like the, the deal with like Rodney's car, where Rodney's uh, Oldsmobile, his mom, when, he, when she gave it to him, said, You cannot cut this car up, which we really didn't. But we made no, it didn't. modern by putting a chassis underneath it and putting modern motor in it. So, but we disguised it also. So it, we disguised it back to original. Um, so I, I don't have a problem cutting cars up by all means, but it's just at what point do you stop? And what part do you start, you know, because you can cut something up too much. Yeah. In fact, I remember, uh, you know, one of the cars that I worked on one time with, you know, another builder, we were talking about it and he said, yeah, the guy came in to do upholstery and he said, you know, well, I can do all this cool stuff. And, and he basically went in and he, he did such an outlandish interior just to show what he could do that he, they said they had to take everything out right. and have someone else redo it. Because it completely ruined the vehicle. And that's, you know, the importance of having everything tie together and work together. And, you know, it just, you don't have that little thorn sticking out of the side. You know, everything just works smooth and cohesively. And, and like you right. say, when you get well, used to working with certain vendors and products, <coughs> you, you stick with it because it works. 100%. I, I, I like my things to look like, you know, that one guy built it, not 10 guys built it. Even though there are plenty of people out there that have 10 guys that can build a truck and it, or a car and it looks like one guy did it, it's just, it is much more challenging than oh, just yeah. having one mindset in the build, you know. At that point, you're almost hurting cats, <laughs> you know, trying to get everyone yeah. to go the same direction. Well, and... and to be fair and valid, like everybody has their opinion, but at, at the, what end of the day do you keep going? What direction do you go? So what ends up happening is, is you end up in multiple directions, and then it looks like multiple p people built something. So, Yeah, if you've got one guy building the door panels, and you've got another guy doing seats, another guy doing a center console, and then it looks like four different ideologies just got smashed together in a blender. Went to right. the part store and right. bought parts off the shelf and threw them on. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things that there's got to be a lot of planning to make sure everything is cohesive and, and makes sense. Well, even so, I learned a lot on this, on the little red pickup truck I just showed you. You know, I, I tell everybody I try and plan 10 or 20 steps ahead. And there are those days you go 10 or 20 steps backwards. But in going forward 10 or 20 steps, if you're strategic, sometimes three steps forward gets you 20 steps forward. So yeah. it just depends on how efficient you are and how well you can premeditate going forward. You know, it, it's kind of crazy to think about, but I, I guess that's just become efficient in that manner, which saves time backside for, for the customer also. So yeah, absolutely. You know, that, that's your advantage of being a micromanager. <laughs> right. Well, right. And it's just like, it's just like me calling you guys first, first build and say, Hey, or, you know, at the beginning of the, of the build and say, Hey, I, I know I'm going to need a stereo for this. This is what we're working with. Get with Tim, Jeremy, John, get with all you guys and say, Hey, this is what's going to work. And we could just make it work. Right. So it's a preemptive strike. It's it, that way. We're not second guessing ourselves midstream and going, Oh my goodness. I totally forgot. Yeah. yeah, or, you know, we wanted to do this and we forgot to plan for this or, you know, you knew you wanted to do something a certain way, but you didn't tell the people ahead, you know, it, like I say, if you're doing multiple builders and that's the advantage, you know, if you're doing it, you can control every aspect and have that vision and plan each step. And I think right. that's important for, you know, a lot of our guys watching, you know, if you're, you know, we had a whole show on, you know, even before you buy gear, we had an entire show dedicated to just you know what you need to think about before you spend any money whatsoever. And that saves you a lot of money and time and hassle in the long run, and especially in projects like this, I can see where it's, you know, it's a huge advantage for you. Sure, sure. We have a gentleman here, Joseph F. Dunphy, MBA, who is asking, do you use a computer program on your project cars? And if so, which one? 
And I'm guessing if maybe he's talking about doing uh, rendering on the front side, possibly. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Um, I don't use any. I the one vehicle I had Carter Hickman render, which was the '56 Mark II Continental, and then I used. Uh, I love that. I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I've used a couple. There's another gentleman out of Florida that I use. Eric Brockmeyer is his name. He rendered yeah. our Mustang and the Oldsmobile for me. So, um, but generally, most of these concepts and ideas come out of my head, and I collaborate real close with the the owner. And unless the owner doesn't have a vision or can't see it, um, then I'll pursue a rendering. You'll guide them, <laughs> guide them correctly. I mean, kind of just give them a visual, right? It's a nice visual tool by all means, but sometimes uh, it's the journey with the owner as the build comes to fruition and not having any predetermined expectations of what it should look like or what it's going to look like. Absolutely. Excuse you again? Nope, nope you're we're, still we're, there. we were yeah. just mesmerized by what you were saying, Scott. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All As right. always. Yeah. So, and by what you've been yeah, doing, so, I'm just here staring at the pictures Tim's pulling up, going, "Wow." I think <laughs> I think this this has one of my favorite <laughs> pictures, is the one after you've moved it off the grass of just all the cross. You can see all the cross members <laughs> and the entire chassis. Oh, like, the imprint. Yeah, there you go. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Just everything. You could lay out the entire chassis right there in the grass. Too cool. Well, Scott, you got any other? You know. Tips of wisdom, advice for some of our guys watching, or no, just you know, start good rapports with good people and keep after them. You know, just keep using them. I mean, you guys have always bent over backwards for me. There's, you know, and and I, likewise, I want to reciprocate back. So um, that's why we're doing the show together. That's you know, I mean, it's just. You know, somebody told me a long time ago, and I don't know if this will make sense or not, but. It's it's easier to walk across a bridge and have relationships than burn them and swim under them. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> anytime you can, anytime you can make good relationships with good people, I generally stick with those same people. You know what I mean? Because I hate starting over, regardless of whether I walk over that bridge or, you know, it's just kind of one of those things. So, well, I'm gonna have to uh, call on you to make a promise. That if you're ever going to run into Texas or anywhere you're even close to us, you're going to come by the facility and, and come see us. We need to get you, you out know, here. I, I believe we're trying to plan a trip to, to Tennessee for spring break in March, possibly. And uh, I know we're going to roll right by you guys. So we're, we're yep. going to come do a family tour or a kicker. Yes, absolutely. We'll look forward to it. We may even put that on camera that night at, or film it or show some <laughs> sections. For so sure. I, I think we're about ready for some giveaways. Scott, once again, always a pleasure. Been a long time since we've actually seen you in person, but hopefully that'll change soon. Uh, definitely appreciate all your, your insight and, you know, the, the pictures and, you know, basically telling us about the, the cars and the system. So it's definitely a, an honor and a pleasure to work with you, and it's going to continue. We promise. Um, I second that <laughs> i it's 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 just been an honor and a pleasure to be here with you guys i mean you guys are like family to me and I, as much as we don't get to see each other as often as we'd like you know you guys i think of you guys and you guys are in my my prayers and in heart all the time so um i just uh once again thanks for having me and i'm not far away i'm a phone call or a text message or email away if anybody needs to hold me so and we're going to i promise <laughs> Sounds good. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, All Scott. Right, guys. And All feel right. free to hang Have out and watch one. the winners. <laughs> All right. I guess we're about to that point. I got about 10 till 9. We're not doing too bad on time, are we? No, I think we're actually doing pretty good. I think uh, we might actually hit the under tonight. Oh, well, I know. You know how I like to talk. It may or may not happen. So. Oh, I do. All right. Yes, you do. Yes. <laughs> so, Mr. Bellfrog in the back room. I think it's about time to give away our third prize winner, which is going to be EB200s, a gray unmasked T-shirt, a koozie, which we don't have a koozie up here, do we? But no, we don't have one. Yeah, we could have used one for this. But who is going to be our third place winner tonight, Bill? 
and pull that up on the screen and make sure when Bill reaches out, you send your name, address, phone number, you know, social security, no, no social security, don't do that. <laughs> no, and so. the, the phone number is only for shipping shirt purposes size. because FedEx, DHL. They will ship. Yeah, they, if, we can't if put they an can't, order in. If they can't get a hold of you or can't get to wherever you're wherever your location is and they need to arrange something else, they have to be able to get all these somehow, so. And I think we're waiting for the third place. It's really quiet back there. there I think the guy's left. Nope, there, oh, is. there it is, all right. Nicole P. from Washington. Congratulations. 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 <laughs> Our third prize winner, that's a set of EB200 earbuds, the gray shirt, and the koozie, which brings us to number two. Number two. Let's hit number two, Bill. Winner number two. Who is that going to be, Tim? That is Anthony A. from Illinois. I know an Anthony A. We got an Anthony A. Ho not too far away from us. Another yeah. audio guy. Yeah. yeah. And he's just down here in Coil, though, about 20 minutes away from here. But Anthony, once again, congratulations. Make sure, you know, when you, Bill sends you that email, make sure you get all the information. And once again, shirt size, don't forget that, because we're going to give you a shirt. We've got to know your shirt size. Yep. Nobody wants the wrong size T-shirt. So let's shoot for a grand prize winner. Stay tuned, everyone. <laughs> it is Sam S. from California. Have we had anyone from California win before? I believe so. I, I don't remember seeing anyone. But anyway, congratulations uh, to all you guys, and thanks for entering. Thanks for watching tonight. And obviously, we're not done yet. We still have some other yeah. things to yeah. give away. Yeah, we have a couple of heavier prizes we have to share. Yeah, out. much heavier. I couldn't believe how heavy that bandpass box got. Yeah, I there's, mean, a, there's a little additional wood in a band yeah, than the there thing is a typical is, sealed. I mean, that's got to be 40 pounds easy. Mm. I mean, by the time you get the woofer and the wood, and you know, it just it's really heavy. So like I say, our shipping department's going to love me for that one. <laughs> so um, once again, the three enclosures that we built here on the show, we're going to give those away to three lucky winners. I think people have been registering for the past couple weeks for those. So uh, I don't even know how we're giving these away. That no one told me before I got up here tonight. So I want to say, or that what order, what box, uh, who's getting what? So you've been a little more familiar with this, Tim. So we're going to let you take this over and uh, tell us exactly what and how they are going to get their prize and who. Well, obviously, who is what you guys want. Obviously, know. Bill will throw up our prize winners. But as it is lined up right now, on Bill's going to throw them up. Yeah. Well, not not like that. Okay. That's the but the big box giveaway. Uh, Prize number three will be the ported enclosure. Prize number two will be the sealed enclosure. And prize number one is the band pass enclosure. And who picked that order? I think it was a randomizer. <laughs> and it doesn't matter. It's, it's a like, random randomizer. It is random. That is kind of random. But anyway, so absolutely. So we're going to start with the third place is the ported, second place is sealed, and first place is the band pass. You ready with some winners back there, Mr. Bill? Are they round or square? 25 hertz to life. Well, the woofers are going to be round. They're going to be the comp RTs. And the enclosures are not are square. They, they're rectangle. Are they R's or RTs? They're R's. Sorry. Yeah, yes, yeah, R's. They're R's. They're not the I, I was thinking I should have done an RT the way the uh, band pass was made just to make it fit in the panel. So I had to actually flip the speaker over a different way to make it all fit. So all that fun stuff about building enclosures from scratch. <laughs> so, yes, the enclosures are rectangle and the speakers are square, just not the shallow amount. So. All right, Bill, third prize winner is going to be Chet K from California. That's two from California. Well, I was going to say, you didn't think we had one, now, and now we had two I in the same show. Definitely can't say we haven't had one now. So uh, That's going to be another one that's going to be expensive to ship to California. Yeah, yeah, that's that's about as far west as you can go, short of actually going all the way to Alaska. Yeah. Are we going to put a Prop 65 warning on it? <laughs> mm, um, you, we're going to have to talk to the lawyers. Yeah, I think that. we definitely will, because we don't. We actually got in trouble for giving away keychains in California. I think you can get in trouble for giving away just about anything. In yeah, California. I'm giving someone a cold or, you know, whatever. But, yep, yep. yeah, I just, uh, we'll, we'll make sure on that. But whatever it is, we'll make it right for you. So congratulations, Chet K. You're going to be getting that ported box, which, you know, bang for the buck, that really is, you know. Oh, no, they sound great. So even though it is the third prize winner, it's probably, you know, one of the best values, oh, yeah. you know, out there. So second prize is going to get the 0.85 cubic foot sealed enclosure with the Comp R Woofer. Yes, sir. And who is number two who's going to win that sealed enclosure, Bill? Tanner C. from Pennsylvania. Tanner, congratulations. You're going to get a great sounding sealed comp R woofer. 
with a speaker grill. That one's got a grill. In fact, the Porter one has the grill too. Why is it every time we give away heavy stuff, it's always about as far away as it can get. It's yeah. like we went all the way from the West Coast, now all the way to the East Coast. Yeah, which would be nice if there's someone closer that wins it that could actually drive up and we give them a tour of the plants yeah. and say hi. Just cruise up. But no, it. not going to work. And actually, if you, if you guys did that one, if you want to come out here and pick them up, I mean, we're not going to stop you from driving. We got a cool museum. Some of these show vehicles we've been talking about or we'll talk about more in the future. So. I think that I think that definitely will have to happen. Yeah, Robert Vane. Yeah, right. Prop sixty five on the box. Yeah, it's a whole <laughs> box of Prop sixty five. So exactly. yeah, it'll never get there because someone will probably chunk it in the river if they think it's full of Prop sixty five. Anyway, let's uh, let's shoot for the grand prize winner of the huge heavy band pass box, and the grand prize winner for tonight is going to be who? Bill. Bill's awful quiet back there, isn't he? All right, there you go, Tim. Tell them who wins. Brandon K. From, from Iowa. Iowa. So it's a little closer. Yep. It's I lived in closer. Iowa for a while. Mm -hmm. So, yep, Iowa's not bad. It's not a bad drive. So if it's from here to my hometown of Lincoln to six hours, it's probably 11 hours. Yeah. So if you don't not mind bad. driving an entire day, come down and pick up that box. So, uh, you know, if you did that, I'd probably even buy you lunch. Well, you can't beat that. Yeah. Lunch is always good, but yeah, it'd be a long trip. But hey, it'd be worth it. I mean, you know, especially, you know, it's actually been pretty nice lately down here. So the weather's good, the roads are good, the drive's good. Um, guys, we really appreciate, you know, obviously, you know, hanging out for the show, registering to win everything. And once again, hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, we want to keep doing this. Tim and I do not want to get real jobs. Mm -hmm. We want to keep doing this. Mm -hmm. I think uh, next week, we're going to be next week. Probably behind the camera. Probably behind the camera. It's nice to have you out in front of the camera, Tim, because we talk while, about you all the time. Every so. once in a while, they got to get me out here and let me let me see. I actually don't get to see the red light on the other side, so now you can that see I can it on see this you guys side. chase the red light, I was like, ah, I get that. And for a while there, we didn't have a red light on any camera, which was kind of bizarre. I didn't know where to go. Yeah, that, that first go around was a little rough. So at least, if you were behind the cameras, you'd at least be pointing, you know, camera, camera. But yep, exactly. we didn't get that lucky tonight because there's no one back there. We just got Bill and back on the computer. We've got JW back there on the screens. And of course, we got Ernie man and all the controls. And one of these days, maybe we'll get Sandy back here, get yeah, her we'll having some it. fun. And, and guys, like I say, it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor. Thank you for sticking with us. You know, support at kicker.com. If you've got any questions, you know, 7.30 every Tuesday night right here on the Kicker YouTube and Facebook channel. Uh, we have fun. We, you've got a, cool people and you know, we're going to continue with some contests. I think we've been talking about doing some even bigger contests. So, uh, you know, let your friends know that, hey, come check it out. Hey, we just have fun. I mean, we're not, you know, brand specific. We're car audio guys. We love it all. So, and cars. Can't forget that. Oh, yeah. So, any final words, Tim? Nope. I think we're good. I think we had a good show. Scott's always a pleasure to talk to. He's one of the he's one of the really good guys in the industry. And yeah, he is awesome. He builds very high-end vehicles, and I, I'm honored that he chooses our product to use in it. Yeah, it's just so. the workmanship. I mean, you guys need to see these things in person. Those pictures oh. do not do them justice. No, they're works of art. So I'm looking up at that clock up there. Do you think you can drag this out one more minute, or do you, do you think we ought just end it right here and say we, we closed before 9 o'clock? Oh, I say we just go ahead and shut it down. Leave, guys, leave them wanting more. Yep. Thanks for tuning in. Good night, and uh, come see us again next week.